What's going on, guys? Uh, we're back with a special edition of the After Hours podcast. Uh, today, we're doing something a little different. We have uh, a small little roundtable of traders from MIC, um, and we brought them on for a special reason. Uh, re- recently, uh, Stephen, one of the moderators in, in the group, uh, he started this really cool channel within uh, my investing club called the Discipline Channel, uh, Discipline Workshop. And basically, I'm going to let him kind of describe what it is and how he grew it. Uh, it is his baby. So, Stephen, I'll let you kind of take the reins here. Sure. Yeah. Hey, guys. So uh, basically about two and a half months ago or so, <clears throat> I kept getting the same kind of questions. And it was like, hey, I'm having trouble with discipline. You know, what could I do? And I always kind of went back to what Alex always used to say, which was like, you know, judge your days based on how well, how well you stuck to your plans, not by your p l So when I first heard that, I don't know, earlier in the, or, or, la, or late last year, early in the year, or la, late last year, I really took it to heart and I started doing it and it started working. And I, you know, didn't pay attention to my PL. I was just like, hey, I stuck to my plan today. I did a good job. And, you know, I used to struggle with discipline and whatnot. And that was one of the things that really helped me. So that along with sizing down was kind of like my core things that helped me. So when people would ask me, hey, you know, what could I do? And, you know, how should I? fix this kind of problem I have. I always knew the problem was rooted in greed, right? It's always about greed. So I would tell the guys the same thing over and over. Then it got to a point where literally, literally like three guys asked me the same at the same time. And I was like, okay, maybe we could just do a tab group, right? I want you guys to follow these rules. And I'm sure in two weeks, you guys will like the results. And then we could show everybody else. Cause it's like, man, I keep saying the same thing. And Alex keeps saying it, but like, people, you know, aren't really doing it or they're still struggling or they need to learn the hard way. Right. So it started there and I was like, okay, we've got three of us. So let's do a tab group. Then I was like, how many could Slack hold in one group, you know, in a group chat. <laughs> so I Googled it. They said nine. So I'm like, okay, let's do a few more. And I put an after hours message out and Ruth, I think I could be wrong, but you you were one of the originals. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So I put I put it out in after hours. I'm like, hey. The match made in heaven right there. Yeah, exactly. So I put it out there and I, I thought I'd get like two or three. I'm like, okay, who's really struggling? You know, we've got some ideas. We want to do a tab group for a couple of weeks. And I kid you not, man. I mean, I don't know if, in, if any of you guys remember that, Rudy, you probably do. But we had 50 plus, I mean, responses wow. in like a few hours. Yeah. And, and then 90 like, and then kept on going. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. crazy. So I'm like, okay, we can't do this in a small group anymore. Let's do like a locked channel. So I talked to Alex. And I'm like, it doesn't seem hard to make a channel. I'll make it locked and we'll just do our own kind of tab group in there. He's like, awesome, you know? So we did that. We did it for two weeks. And I called out one more time and after I was, hey, who wants to join this? We're, you know, we're doing this thing. And I don't remember what that original group had, but it was over 100, if I remember correctly. So yeah, it was over 100. So we did that for two weeks um, and Ruta was there. And we, I think it was two weeks. Or, yeah, it was two weeks. Then everybody saw pretty good results and they're kind of like, hey, let's extend this. Let's, let's extend this. And the problem was like at the time, it was like a lot of people were focused there and, and maybe not so much posting issues in after hours. And, every, and we were all kind of like, well, we don't want this to take away from after hours. Why don't we open this channel up? So we said, okay, open it up and we'll also post an after hours and everybody could kind of get in there. So when we opened it up, you know, it kind of snowballed. I mean, we had a couple hundred now we've got, I think over 500, 550 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much it. And what we ended up doing is we put guidelines out and it was just like I explained, it was like, hey, you know, size down, uh, you're gonna get a calendar, you mark your wins or losses only based on your, you know, if you stuck to your plan or not, we don't care about your PL, right? So everybody started doing it. Um, and I honestly didn't do it at first because here's the thing, like I didn't want the workshop to be about me. You know, I'm already posting charts all day in, in main chat. So I didn't want to be like, hey, look at my discipline, look at my charts. You know, I wanted it to really be about the members, right? But after the first month, everybody put their results out and I was like, floored. I'm like, what's going on here? Like these guys... A lot of them are new, you know, new, newer to MIC, like Ruby, you had been in MIC five months. And well, you guys, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Actively tr- trading, yeah, around five months, but just 
bouncing here and there. It's been a bit longer, but it, it I would say like five. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Here. So I mean, people, members like Ruta were posting these results where they had like one red day, <laughs> like in the whole month. And I'm like, what's going on here? And it's, you know, mainly from sticking to their plans, right? Mm -hmm. And even the red days would be pretty minimal because they're always planned. So that's the thing. You can't get in much trouble when you've planned all your exits and, and, and your stops. I mean, there's no way. So I, you know, I knew this thing worked, but I didn't think it would work that good. I mean, come on. If I had this when I was new, right? I mean... <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, I'm going to be yeah. honest with you. Like the reason I've gotten like so involved in the workshop is because when, when you first started it, I was like, this is not going to work. I'm not, <laughs> I, I was like, I thought it wasn't. I was like, this is like a bad <laughs> idea because I've been, so I've been trading for five years and, and right. Harry's been trading a little longer. And, and right. dude, you don't know how many people we've seen. Like, it's just a discipline yeah, issue. It's a discipline like, issue. Always. Yeah, always. always. Yeah, always. 99%, like, yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, this guy can make a lot of money on Monday. And then Tuesday comes, he blows up right. that times 10. Right. And then once I started seeing some of the September results, I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. I was like, maybe maybe the difference is that that group mentality. Where like, So Stephen yeah. touched on the tab group, which for anyone who's not an MIC, a tab group is just something that Bow and Alex really created. It's just trading. Uh, it's a trading accountability, but it's trading within a group um or with one other person and kind of bouncing ideas keeping each other accountable um and you know for i guess years we've always treated it as like that really only pertains to like your trading like your actual trades but it goes deeper than that it goes to d discipline it goes towards keeping each other accountable on all aspects of of right. life really um yeah. and i think i think that's why the, the discipline workshops really exploded and like we see members like ruda uh trevor john like just doing really well it's, it's really cool to see yeah. And I also think that like, instead of having just one tab, it gives you like four or 500 other tabs, yeah. which really kind of, which I never really thought of. Yeah. Plus also just getting, like you said, getting feedback from everyone and like, like discipline is like a, it's like a snowball. Like the, the better, the more you do it and the, like the better you are at it, the bigger it can get and the more disciplined you become. That's why you see guys like Alex that are beyond discipline, right? Like it's disgusting. It's from eight to nine years of discipline and having a tab keeping discipline as well. So I think you guys are just building these great habits and then your snowball kind of snowballs into someone else's snowball and you just keep getting bigger and better. So, so really kudos to you, Steven, this, this idea really is, is truly something uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And maybe uh, John and Ruda and Trevor can all take turns, maybe like explaining like how it's helped them kind of like evolve as a trader, like John, you can start and then Ruda, you can go after and then Trev. Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. Yeah, um, like I was just going to jump in there about the about the tab thing. And it's, yep. I, this this summer when I was hanging out with Steven, I told him it's kind of hit or miss. You know what I mean? Like, yep, got got linked up with a, a you know a tab partner, and then maybe a little small group of about four. And, you know, they weren't as um, it's just not in the same place. You know, like yeah. you know, maybe trading cash accounts, not you know, not um uh, not not active every day because they you know are under uh, under pdt and that so it's i think the um the tab the discipline workshops really good because there's people in there all the time and, I, and it's because of the activity that i think it's provides more value for me anyway um than the Love tab it. groups that i've been in um so that, so that's awesome um yeah i mean i've been in mic almost a year i kind of didn't trade this summer because i had a lot of the family stuff going on but um so actively trading, maybe in like nine months. Um, and it, it does help a lot understanding um, understanding that you can have a win without actually making any money on PL that day um, and and sticking to sticking to a process. And yep. it's totally accurate. Like my biggest losses have been when I've just done stupid stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, this stock's going to go down or this one's going to go up because of news and it just doesn't happen and not trading with a plan. So um, I'm after, you know, you know fairly – decent loss for myself um just having a plan and always um sticking to it is totally beneficial for me because it um it, it it takes all that emotion out of it and um even on days now when i have a small loss and it's totally manageable i uh, uh 
it, I don't, I don't, I don't get down on myself about it. I'm like, Oh, I stuck to my process. It's a win for the day. And I came back and traded the next day, which in the past, I'd like, I think it's old Steven earlier in the week. I'd have crawled in a hole for three or four days or a week and not yeah. traded at all. You know what I mean? And been like, Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, got down on myself and, and I blew it and uh, you know, and it keeps me from doing that now too. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I, I stuck to my plan. It didn't work out. Um, you know, the trade didn't pan out the way we all, I thought it was going to. I stopped out and we'll come back and make a new plan tomorrow. So and it's, still it's, a win. Uh, it's made yeah. me more consistent. Yeah, It is a win. Exactly. That's a I, huge win. I think yeah. a lot of, a lot of new traders know that feeling of like, you know how to trade, but then you deviate from your plan or your process and you're like, you blow up a big loss and you're like, what the fuck? Like, why did yeah. I just do that? You know, and you do that, you crawl in your hole and you're like so down on yourself. So, so you're saying, John, does it even make a difference? Just, it makes a difference in your day-to-day -day life too. Like you can walk away from the screens, not feeling like just that upset, almost depressed feeling of like, what did I just do? Exactly. And that's what I would get. I would go into a funk and, you know, I've, I've been working from home for eight years, so I don't have any coworkers either. So this is, you know, <laughs> that, this, yeah. this isolation of being a, a trader is also, you know, is compounded when I go to work because um, cool. I'm by yeah. myself then too. So um, it also gives you that sense, a little more sense of community of having a tab group um, that's actually actively trading and, um, and rooting for each other, you know, so that, that helps a lot. Love it. Yep. Love it. And rooting it. for each other. Rooting yeah. for each other. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get what you, I see what you did there. Rooting. We can go on to Ruta. Yeah, go ahead. Well, same like John is saying, it's just, it's very, first of all, it's very difficult with tabs because one comes, one goes. So I had a tab. The guy was very nice dude. He lived here in Vegas too. But it's like, I'm 700 up. I'm 200, 2,000 down. It's like, whoa. It's just like, it's difficult. It's difficult when you don't have that discipline. You just like all over the place. And now it's just like, again, like John said, we have like a big group with the same kind of rules and really keeps you grounded. And that's, you know, the way Steven set the rules, guys, just because we're all very emotional. We just very like, for me, before market opens, I get a lot of anxiety. To be honest, I do. I'm one of those people, like, I'm like a little squirrel. Like, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. See what it does. What I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And this really keeps you down. I wake up. I make my coffee. I see what's happening. I just put my fantasy orders, bam, 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 here and here. That's it. I do not care. You know, yeah. and I'm just sit and I watch. See, if you come here, I'm good. If you don't come here, I'm out. You know, because for me, the, and what happens with discipline, you have to stick with one thing. Yeah. You cannot see it. There's a lot of people do a lot of things, but those people are kind of, they know their limits. Like I know I cannot just go uh, and short and then long and then see what this one does. Uh, let's see what the big caps are doing. No, yeah. this is absolutely no. You, when you get better, you do whatever you want to do. But what do you do? You just follow that watch list as your to-do list. And I understand it gets very frustrated for uh, new traders. When you come to your computer, you have like a three, three goals. Let's say only three things on the watch list because it gets slow. It gets different, different ways. And like maybe of those three choices, uh, Low case are expensive, mm. like you have two choices and then none of the, the hits and you have to make sure you're going to walk away. Because when I started, I was like, ah, oh, this is bullshit. This one does not, is not hitting. This one doesn't be like, ah, you know, let me see what else I can do, you know? And then it, it always gets you in trouble. Always gets you in trouble. And it's just like, and also like they preach here, like put your heart stops. You know, don't don't have that attitude. You know what? Let let me see what it does. Oh, it'll show you what it does. Mm. You know, <laughs> just, you can't you can't do those things. It's just like, and again, like when we have this big group right now, you feel ashamed if you do something dumb. Right, right. So that's a, accountability. You feel like like a dumbass, and you know, you and yeah, like John says, we go on each other's. I go through everybody's chart, even if I don't, and I see what people did right, what people do wrong. And it's like, oh, this 
so stupid. Like I, 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 I would totally would have done the same thing if I traded, you know, and you try yep. to like really root for people and try to explain them where you struggle because what happened um, when you open main, main chart, you just don't know what people are doing. You don't know where people's head is. And right now, every person like you, you have you got, have you even noticed how many stronger uh, traders are coming into yep. the group? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Like, you know, yep. like he, she, they kind of solid, but somehow they not. And it's yep. not something to say, oh, look at this. It just gives you that thing that you are not unique, that everyone is struggle. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's I... just like it's good feeling to say, like, you know what? And you see people's plans and they matching with you. It just gives you that, mm. you know, and stupid plans and good plans, they matching with your whatever you're doing and it gives you understanding where you at, where you're going. It's just a whole new thing. Yeah. When you just tap into that, it's just, it's wonderful. It, 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 it's really, really wonderful. I think it's, it's awesome. Yeah. And I then, think, I it's think it, isn't it like you guys like yeah. advanced, but you, you, that would be such a important step for you to pivot from if you were like beginners. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. I, mean, I, I completely agree. I don't even think it's, it's necessarily like just for beginners, like, like you said, and like to touch on a lot of what you just mentioned, you know, I have, I have a, a friend, his brother-in-law works at a hedge fund and he trades a hundred million dollar book. And I got to sit down with him. We were talking and he says every day he wakes up and he's still, he's been trading for like 15 years. He sweats, he gets anxious, he's stressed. He's like, fuck, he's got, he knows he's going to trade massive size, whatever. But the second he gets in the drive, sits down and he's like in the driver's seat and he makes a plan. That's it. He's like, then I can just sit. And he's like, then I have my coffee and I eat my breakfast. And he's like, that's yeah. it. But like every day, like the market's going to test your anxiety. It's going to test everything. Cause we're, we're using emotions. We're using everything that humans are like rooted kind of against and like all like the negatives that we have. So kind of what you're saying, like when you sit down you have a plan and you're like, you're not scared anymore. There's you take away that, like that negative energy. And you're like, well, the market's going to do what the market's going to do. Either my plan works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, I did the best I could. Yeah, you exactly. know, very true. And a lot of traders say like, oh, my God, you know, greed is my thing. Me, I'm not greedy. I'm scared. <laughs> Here. I'm not greedy. I'm just like, I'm so, I'm, I get terrified. I would get terrified and, and that to trust yourself on your lines and your plans. Like Steven says, you need to go with the small plans because, you know, I just got both, you know, pennies up taken like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, but yeah. with a small with a small size, you get to learn stocks personality. Yep. And 100%. you let it breathe, you let it do what it needs to do. You don't jump with every little penny. And then you grow that muscle of understanding, you grow that muscle of yeah. letting letting to do your own thing, and then you can upsize, you can do whatever you want, but you just really need to you know, do all those. It's a process. It's a process. Yeah. Have you noticed, have you noticed your plans working more and more now that you've been in the discipline channel, like bef compared to before, or like when you first joined? Of course. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But an another thing, you just learn yourself, you learn more where you're lacking. And I was uh, just uh, talking to another member, just almost laughing because I went on this like green strike. Like, I'm just this and that. But then you, like, in a couple of weeks, you get possessed to be green. And it's, again, you're learning yourself because it's not the best thing because you just want to be green. But yeah. you have to trade good. Being yeah. green is not good enough because I would exit too early just to be yeah. green. Yeah. You know what I mean? you're learning, so you're learning yourself. You say, you know what? I, I don't need to be green. I need to learn how to be red. So I'm going to take this little understandable loss. And I don't care if I am red, but I'm just taking more risk. If I want to be a little bit more profitable, if we're going to even talk about money, because we don't really care at this point, you know, so just mm. being just, just to be green, it's not good. You need to learn yourself. What do you need to do to be a better trader? Right. You know, and, and I constantly thing? see my 
I uptick a lot of entries. My entries are solid, but my I see. Entries, yeah. oh man, I just got my <laughs> money and run, you know. It's just I was like, just going to uh cut in real quick and we also haven't heard from Trevor yet. Um so Trevor, what's up, bro? What's up, what's up? Oh, I just saw this black square over there. I kind of forgot Trevor was showing me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can kind of dive in as well, although you're kind of experienced in the discipline workshop as yeah. well. So, yeah, my experience is a little different than uh, Rudin John's. I've been training for quite, uh, actually quite a while. Um, and what I noticed in my own training and or what has always messed me up is I go on these really good green streaks and I trade really well. And then just like, you know, I get in my head and I have a lost day, which should be a manageable lost day. And then it was like the next day I'm like, I got to make that back. And then I have another lost day. It was always big days of three. That was like my magic number, three big lost days. Um, and then I would claw my way back and keep working and keep working and, my last like little I guess roller coaster down um I looked back at like my plan after all the smoke had cleared I guess and um then I wrote down and I was like man my plan was like I think the line I said um I wanted to hit it to the penny and then ripped it was a long and and then the other trade I got just chopped to pieces on it basically was hitting hitting my lines perfectly if I would have just traded my lines and been patient and I kind of just realized that like I have a I just have a discipline issue it's like I know how to trade I know what I'm doing when when my head's on straight but sometimes when my head's not on straight I'm just I trade like a complete idiot and I look back at the other day and it's like oh my god like what the fuck did I do and um you know, and then you're like, I know better. I know better, but it's hard because going to the next day, even though you know better and you know, going into the next day, you're probably going to be more emotional and all that. It's like, I'm sure you guys all know how it feels. Like it feels like something comes over you almost. And you're just, I'm not yeah. like Ruda. I'm, I'm a cowboy. I like to shoot. <laughs> I <laughs> train a lot. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the opposite way. Like it's my, my problem is over trading like crazy, but, I just kind of realized, like, man, if I could just stop and slow down. And, I, and I, you know, I was watching the Discipline Channel. I didn't start as early as Rudy did. But I was watching and I was seeing these people, like, posting kind of the same thoughts I was having in my head. It's like, man, today was a total fail in discipline. My plans were great, but I found myself trading random stuff. Yeah. And I was like, dude, that's me, like, 100%. I, and my plans are solid. And I looked back over, like, the last week because I had a bad week that week. And I looked over my week at my plans versus my trades. And if I had traded my plans, it was like, dude, my plans were amazing. So it's like, I don't have a planning issue. It's just a following my plan. So that's when I kind of decided, like, <clears throat> I have to stop focusing on P&L because that's one thing I definitely was focused on. And just look at my trading date as, did I follow my plans? Yes or no. And that's how, that's the only way I'm going to judge, judge my trading success on that day or that week is was I disciplined yeah. did I follow my plan and then it's funny because when you start doing that it's like all of a sudden you start having trades that work and you know what I mean it's like oh shit like having just solid days that would have been you know a chop day or or just stay out or not trade anything and you look back at the end of the day which is just as satisfying seeing a day that is super choppy and you just didn't take any trades and walk away so yeah I kind of took away that, that like need to be in a trade, you know, like before the market opens, like I'm trading this stuff, period. It takes away that like anxiety of, oh shit, I need to find something. I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss the runner or I'm going to miss this or that. At the end of the day, I'm going to feel so stupid because I didn't hit this trade or, you know, um, so yeah. I think honestly, it's, it's amazing. I think everyone should do it because I think we can trust it's hard. It's only like, I think you, you said it, James is like, you have to make your plan when you're a sober mindset. Cause yeah, when, when I'm trading, I am not sober. No, yeah, <laughs> no, we're intoxicated with profits, man. Like we're yeah, always thinking dude. like, what can we make? What? Are, and it's a weird thing because you see it like the days, like, so part of the discipline channel also is not only do we post the winning days, we post the losing days and not necessarily like everyone's Every losing P and L losing process. Right. And 
99% of the time, the losing process is like someone just made a plan on the fly. Yeah. Someone got in, they're in a trade, the stock's moving. They think, what can I make? And they just get in and they lose. And then they're like, shit, why did I do that? And what I'm noticing with you three is like, I think you guys kind of woke up to that. And there's a, there's like a, a progression as a trader that you realize that like, dude, when I make those dumb mistakes, those moves that I have no plan on, I lose. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's when I trade something I don't plan previously, I lose. And, and the, problem, the problem with that is it's an unplanned loss. So it can oftentimes be a big one. Yeah. Those are my yep. biggest losses. If I, I actually, I want to do this. I want to go through my trader view because my biggest losses are always like stocks that I didn't stop out because I didn't yep. have a plan always. or stocks that I didn't take profit and they reversed on me and I panicked and I added. Yeah. So and I, all it, the stocks that I squeezed you on as well. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's it's true. It's the stocks that I got greedy on, right? And you know, same thing. And you know, Trevor, for you, right? Because you've been you've been at this for a little bit. Have you noticed like even yeah. outside outside of trading for you, like personally, like that the weight of like the markets isn't so heavy afterwards, like after you're done trading for the day? Yes, dude. Well, yes, and one thing you said about losses, yes, my losses have gotten so much smaller because normally if I had a loss, I would stay till the fucking close looking to try, <laughs> try to yeah, make yeah. it back. Right, and right. I'm not walking away, you know what I mean? If I had a loss, it's like, no, nah, I'm making that shit back. So, oh, yeah, dude, I'm, my losses are smaller because I can take one small loss, tiny little cut and walk away and go about my day and I feel amazing. So, 100%, dude, like the... Right. The feeling of I should be at my charts right now because something's probably happening and, oh, I could have made my loss back. You're not worried about that because, like, I didn't have a plan to trade anything else. So there's no FOMO there. I can walk away, ignore it, and just enjoy my day and come back fresh tomorrow. Yeah, and I also think that the market is designed to take advantage of emotional traders. Like, yep. it's designed to take advantage if you're uh, undisciplined, if you're super emotional. Um you know, it's designed so that when you have a small loss, you want to keep making it back and making it back and making it back. And you keep going back to the same slot machine or poker table or, you know, roulette table. And it's so that you keep throwing your coin in and throwing your coin in. And sometimes, yeah, you may get lucky, but I'm going to say the vast majority of the time you end up with, uh, you end up in a worse spot than you started, I think for sure when you get into that type of mindset. <clears throat> so that's where kind of the discipline channel can come in. Um, you know, you, you have to put your plan out in the morning. Um, and although I, I don't see 400 plans being posted every morning, but I see about like, like how many active members would post their plan every morning, Steven, do you think? I mean, I'd be guesstimating. Uh, what do you think, James? Uh, 20 to 30, 30? Yeah. The, the the same ones daily definitely 20 to 30 yeah. even yeah. though in the in the discipline workshop i'm looking right now it's 535 members so it, it's it's something that we really want to encourage we want to talk about was yeah out of those 535 members i want to see all 535 members put yeah. it'd be a lot of a lot of freaking 535 answers. plans <laughs> yeah. 535 <laughs> executions. Right. And, yeah. and the thing is i get a lot of dms and i shared one the other day in mod chat i get a lot of dms and people say I'm in the channel, I'm active, I'm just shy, I don't post, but I'm following along and it's helping. Yep. I, I get like, that. I've heard this from 15, 20 people. So I know, and on the new member surveys, we have three responses this week. All three said they're being helped in the, in the workshop. Yeah. And, and these are new members. So I know people are in there following it, but they're shy to post. Yeah. And don't be shy. Honest to God, you shouldn't be shy because no, we all make the same mistakes. It's a hundred percent. We've all done it before. <laughs> We've all taken the same dumb losses. If you post a chart, I, I can promise you, I can post a worse one. I've done so, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I posted I some would massive losses. Post. Of course, dude. We I all do. I was a little gun, gunslinger, you know? But hey, well, Hell yes. <laughs> I say, I saved that chart for you of that that stock that you were long and they had like a massive like a, a earnings call and it just kept going for you. That's yeah, that's they had a, I didn't realize that there was a conference call. <laughs> then the CEO, CFO, <laughs> and everyone in the fucking Quit. company quit on that call and it gets halted down. And I'm like, oh shit. And then I look, it's like 30K because all my other fantasy orders oh. hit. It must have been like, 
I swear to God, like a hedge fund or something, just put every single share they owned of that fucker on the market. <laughs> and it was just like, doom. <laughs> and that's it. It's just, it, it's, listen, we've all done it. So guys, when you're in the channel, don't be, don't be shy. Don't be nervous. And just, it holds you accountable. That's all I'm going to say. I think this that step peer is pressure pressure helps. Helps. Yeah. A hundred percent. Uh, you're sitting there and you know, I, I, I know if I'm going to post something, it's like, dude, I don't post that. I feel like a fucking idiot if I post that. <laughs> Made that so, bag back, baby. So, yeah. Trev, so, Trev, I'll bet you you've noticed that whenever somebody, not you necessarily, whenever somebody posts and they don't see the reason, one of us jumps in and says, why? You can't just yeah. deviate and not explain. That's one of the rules, right? So, right. like, we're not, in- we're not aimed to embarrass you, but we're aimed to figure out what's wrong so we could give you constructive advice you Trev, bro, if you're deviating just too. say make but trying to make that bag back harry trying to make that yeah, bag back. <laughs> trying to get that bag boy <laughs> yeah. all it you is, guys is are like... super good though with J- james steven and harry you guys have all i think it's awesome how active you guys are in there i don't I think everyone's not in there sometimes like... i just either forget or like yesterday like i wasn't around so like i couldn't be like you know, watching my buddy's grandmother get buried, you know, texting on the discipline workshop. Like, great yeah, job, Bruda. Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> Priorities. Priorities. <laughs> Priorities. Once the once the Dom Perry gets poured, then it's over. Then you're then you're screwed. <laughs> well, then, then we don't know if I'm making the podcast this morning. <laughs> so but oh, another man. thing I, I'd love to encourage is anybody participating, you guys are also free to to you know thread uh, any helpful advice you've got it, it shouldn't just be like the mods you know what i mean i mean we're there we're there all the time helping but like all of us have good advice and the channel is not for mods only to give advice i mean i need help sometimes you know it's not just like i'm the only guy with the answers you know so when, yeah. whenever people see somebody struggling and you've been down that road feel free to like you know thread uh, something uh, constructive and helpful yeah, yeah, and also like maybe someone's looking to try and like become a junior mod or something like that. You know, that's a great way to do it. And even with some of the junior mods we have already, that's a great idea for them to pop in and go in there as well. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of junior mods that we have that just, you know, they don't really know what to do, what to say, how to act because, you know, you're like a junior mod now. So like that could be a good way for the junior mods and also people looking to become like a junior mod to kind of get active in their post and, you know, message with Steven. And uh, yeah, that's like Agreed. a great way to, to get active. Right. Agreed. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, you know, I, I think it's, we should start kind of wrapping this up, but you know, if, if anyone really is interested, you know, feel free to DM all of us, anyone in this podcast right now. Um, I'm sure they wouldn't mind just if you have questions about the chat. Um, and, you know, I think, I think a lot of the people, there's a lot of members in MIC and I know there's not, a hundred percent profitable traders, right? So the guys that are still struggling a little bit, reach out. What's the worst it's gonna do, right? Come experience it, see what it's like to have a really good tab group and like a five hundred person tab group, and then you know, and just see what see where it takes your career. I think you guys will find some great, great uh, joy in kind of doing it too. It's a lot of fun. Agreed. Awesome. Perfect. Well, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up here, and thanks everyone for uh coming out and uh you know i appreciate it so thanks guys cool yeah thanks guys thanks guys thank you see you in the workshop here